get a dog for the first time, or maybe it's your first dog, one of the first things you think about is where you're going to contain it. Some people live in apartments and they have inside dogs, and obviously you're gonna walk that dog on a leash, you know, when you take it outside to go to the bathroom, but people who live with backyards or front yards or just land in general are gonna let their dogs go outside. And of course, an untrained dog with no fencing, it can go anywhere it wants. And um, you gotta take time to train it. Or you can build physical fencing. And physical fencing, there's a lot of caveat. Number one, I mean, you gotta build the thing. Um, you could always hire a professional to come in and install one. I remember when I got my first Doberman, the first thing he did, and I already had a, a physical fence up at the time, and um, his name was Titus, and he, he's long since passed away, but we had a privacy fence in the backyard. It was a six foot privacy fence, and um, one day he was peeking through, you know, one of the holes or, or one of the slats in the bottom, and I guess he saw a rabbit or a squirrel or something, and without running at the fence or anything, he just leaped over it. He figured out a way around the fence, and a great day or a St. Bernard or even a Chihuahua can figure out a way to dig under the fence, you know, for those of you dealing with uh, dogs who have digging problems. Eventually, the overall solution arrived, and that is, that came in the form of GPS fences. GPS fences, and when I say GPS fences, we're mostly referring to the spot on uh, second generation and the Halo third generation, both collars, which I have here with me and um, have used extensively over the last several months. But um, GPS fences change the entire dynamic. Um, now you no longer needed a physical fence, or if you're in a position, in the same position that I am, I have a physical fence, but I also have two Dobermans. And thanks to my experience with Titus so many years ago, I'm well aware that they can jump over a six foot privacy fence and I don't have a privacy fence in this home. We have a regular chain link fence. So I know that they can jump over it and my female Doberman, Athena, she likes to dig. I'm aware that she could probably dig under the fence if she really wanted to put her uh, back into it. The GPS fencing gives me peace of mind that I need to know that I can keep my dogs contained in the yard. But with the, with the GPS fencing, she no longer does that because that's another thing with Athena. She's she's trained enough to understand signals and to understand when she's doing wrong and when she needs to come back. And that's how the GPS fencing works. It provides that invisible barrier so that I no longer have to worry about either Doberman jumping over the fence. They're great in a lot of ways. I mean, they come with, you know, obviously the collar and all the software and hardware packed into these things. You know, they're basically walking garments on a dog's neck with more functionality than just a traditional GPS but they use various uh, different GPS satellites to triangulate your dog's position, just like a GPS does for, um, you know, when you're using an app, when you're driving your car to a location that you've never been to before. And it, it functions very similar to that, but you also add in the cellular tracking. Um, the spot on has uh, Verizon and AT&T and Halo has universal cell. Then you throw in Bluetooth and then you throw in Wi-Fi. Now you've got a lot of different wireless capabilities here keeping up with these collars. Not only are they keeping up with these collars, but they're also working with the collar in conjunction with the fence. And the GPS generates the fence. Or GPS doesn't really generate anything, but the the call the um the software generates the fence and the GPS, you know, is what keeps everything in place. I'm kind of going on along here, but you know, it's important to understand the benefits of having one of these collars when you have dogs that, you know, are like my Athena and like to escape or, or like to just run, you know, and uh, she's a highly energetic dog. And I'm sure that some of you watching this probably have highly energetic dogs and they don't want to stay inside the fence line all the time. You know, even if they're well-trained, sometimes dogs want to break the rule. These GPS devices, specifically the spot on the halo, but I'll also be talking about um, the WAGs and uh, Attractive, which is another product I have here at home. And that's what we're going to go over today. Before we get started, Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We've got a lot of content on the way. Um, these are not the only devices that I have and I don't, I don't review anything that I have not physically messed with, discovered my likes and my dislikes of it, and am able to bring you an informative review of each product. Now I'm gonna start things off with the spot on collar. This is it in a nutshell. It doesn't come with any fancy covers or you know interesting little clips or clamps or anything of that nature. And you'll have to put a D ring on it. it does come with its little uh, cradle charger, which is pretty decent. You put your little USB port here or um, plug here in the back and then you can just set the collar in there like that. Pretty simple as far as charging and whatnot. The GPS or the um, spot on collar work using 128 different GPS GPS satellites split into groupings of four. 
it communicates, that's, that's basically how you map out your virtual fence. You map it out with cell technology and GPS technology. The two work together to maintain your virtual fence and communicate with the collar and let you know when your dog you know, approaches or crosses that virtual fence. Even if there's not a cell signal, you can still utilize the collar because it also communicates via Bluetooth. So, I mean, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you could still draw out a fence with your GPS. And, um, you know, as long as you've got Bluetooth on your phone, you've got an operating collar. So it doesn't necessarily need a cell phone signal to operate. The biggest thing with a cell phone signal is, is, you know, the map and uh, location tracking. Like if your dog escapes or something, which we'll get to that in a little bit, but with a uh, spot on, you have to have um, a subscription model in order to use their Verizon AT&T AT connections to you know, track your dog. The ultimate range of the spot on is pretty extensive. It's a hundred thousand acres. Now that's quite a bit of a, uh, that's quite a bit of real estate to cover there. And the good thing about it is no matter how small or big your range, it, it works effectively the same. So if you have a hundred thousand acres, um, it will work just as good covering that, that broad swath of area as it will if you have one half. Speaking of one half an acre, that is the minimum that spot on recommends that you have is one half an acre for it to operate properly. Anything smaller than that, and I've tried it before, tried drawing out a smaller than half an acre, a little uh, map with spot on, it won't even let you really complete the map. You have to kind of make it bigger than your yard. And of course, if you did that, that wouldn't really be effective. Other than that, it's a very precision, uh, or it's very precise as far as, um, you know, knowing where your dog is at and keeping your fence in place. There's a little bit of drift here and there, and I'm not sure if you, you know, maybe you've heard the term, maybe you haven't, but the fence tends to drift a little bit this way, a little bit that way sometimes. Talking maybe three or four feet, spot on says 10 to 15 feet, but I've never experienced drift like that. And I live in a, I have a dense tree canopy overhead, which is another part of the spot on that I really like, is the always on forest mode. It's not a feature you have to turn on or off. It automatically recognizes when you're under a heavy tree canopy and utilizes forest mode, which is basically creates a more precise GPS signal so that you don't have to worry about being like a lot of these other callers attractive and the um, the wags which I'll get to later they have trouble dealing with heavy tree canopies now halo has its own answer for that which I'll cover here later spot-on has the forest mode and another thing that's really nice about the spot-on which are none of the other callers have is you can create a little keep out zone inside your virtual fence area once you've created your big virtual fence and you have a garden or a shed or something along those lines a little area you don't want the dog getting into you can uh, set that up draw you some more invisible fencing lines as a keep out zone and you know it treats the dog the same way that your invisible barrier fence perimeter them out of that zone by alerting their collar vibration um high pitch noise feedback um the various other tools you use with the collar teach your dog to stay away all of those things remain in effect for the keep out zone as well as the regular zone that you create. What are the pros and cons of this thing? Every, everybody loves pros and cons, so I'm gonna do pros and cons. They're quick and easy, and you can kind of just get your information, you know, in a nutshell. So there's a lot of pros and cons to this. Well, there's a lot of pros, few cons, but um, one of the most important things that I like about the spot on collar is precision. Like I mentioned before, the forest mode, um, whether you live in a deep, you know, or you live under dense tree canopy, or you live out in the wide open, you expect, you, you can expect to get the same, you know, precision accuracy and signal. You know, as your dog moves across the yard, once, once he or she crosses the barrier, boom, you're getting an alert. You know, if you're under a heavy tree canopy and they cross over that barrier or approach that barrier, boom, you get an alert. Um, you know, you only get one day, basically, of battery power with either of these, uh, the Spot On or the Halo. The Spot On advertises 22 hours, okay? And from personal experience of just leaving the thing on just to see if it would last 22 hours, I got maybe, you know, 20, I got maybe an hour left. Um, the good news is you pop it on that charger, especially with a USB-C, and if the other end is a USB-C, not a USB-A, that thing will charge in about an hour. Now, if the other end of it that you're plugging into your, um, um, outlet is a USB-C as well, and you got like a 20 watt charger. I mean, you may you might charge that thing in 30 minutes. You know, it won't take it won't take as long, but I mean, maximum time about an hour, and um, it's pretty much done. Um, it looks kind of bulky. You know, it's got these two big uh, rectangular bricks here in the center. You know, this contains the active antenna, your vibration stuff. You know, all that hardware is in there, which is where all the software comes from. But it it's comfortable on her. I like the app design. 
of uh, spot on. I like it better than halo. And the reason I say that is you can draw out your fences and it's very, very intricate and responsive. Like, you know, with the halo app now, you know, obviously I'll, with the halo app, you have to kind of touch it, hold it and press onto the screen to make things move around like you want to. With a spot on, it's very, very responsive when you're, you're setting your fence posts and you're moving things around you're setting up your uh, perimeter, very responsive and it's very intuitive. It's easy. You know, that's, that's one thing that I really, appreciate because you know everything's everything's got an app these days so you want an app that's intuitive and simple to use um it's quick and easy to fit it i also like that it covers 100,000 acres if i had 100,000 acres i probably wouldn't be making these videos but i don't but it does cover 100,000 acres so if you have that much land you're covered with the spot on okay so you get plenty of coverage with this thing that's a lot of real estate and uh it works just as effectively at 100,000 acres as it works half an acre speaking of the half acre like i said before this is one of the cons and i say this because not everybody has a half acre yard or larger spot on only supports down to 10 inch neck. So if your dog has a smaller than 10 inch neck, you're not gonna be able to use the spot on collar. The only other con I can really think of or that I've personally experienced using it is that the spot on is very generous with with not using a subscription model. You can uh, you can map out your invisible fences. You can do all of that stuff. It, it, will, it will operate just fine. It'll keep your dog inside the boundaries. Um, it'll do all that stuff. Keep out zones, force mode, all that stuff. It takes care of just fine. But if your dog escapes the fence and gets out and you don't have a subscription with um, Spot On, it will not track it for you. It will not track your dog. In order to do tracking, which requires a Verizon or AT&T cell coverage, now Spot On says it uses both. I would imagine they use it interchangeably, but um, you're not gonna be able to track your dog. I, know, I just now realized I popped my fingers on right in front of you and I wasn't even thinking about it. Anyway, you won't be able to track your dog if uh, you don't have that subscription. Now, the subscriptions are pretty cheap. Um, it's been a little while since I've had this. I did the subscription for this already just to see what it was like, but I wanna say it was around anywhere between six and 10 bucks. Uh, the Halo is $5.99 for their bottom tier plan or their month long, but uh, they do offer annual and I think they offer biannual cheaper overall prices. So you do have those options, but you have to have them if you wanna track your dog. So moving on to the Halo collar. Now this collar, similar to the uh, bot on in terms of size and weight, but as you can see here, the bulk is kind of a little more streamlined around. Um, it's got this neat little magnet charger, which plugs into a USB-C and it just pops on there just like that. I keep the uh, I keep this piece connected to the USB cable at all times. That way I just kind of dedicate that cable to this piece just because it's so tiny and you can lose it. Um, but this is an excellent little collar as well. Um, bought on, goes on my female Doberman, Athena, and the halo collar goes on my male Doberman, Aries, who's, you know, twice her size and uh, has a bit of a broader neck, but um, still, it's been a great collar for us and um, it's very accurate, um, it's very precise. It doesn't have force mode like spot on, but it's got its own little things, which I'll get into here before long, but you can create up to 20 fences with it. And the astonishing thing about the halo three collar, this is a halo third generation collar, is according to halo, it covers up to 780,000 acres. Now, I have no way of proving that. <laughs> I don't I don't even know how I could drive out 780,000 acres and try to do it or, or I've never even attempted to try to do that on the uh, satellite imagery on the um, on the app itself. 780,000 acres is in is that's amazing. The spot on by comparison is 100,000 acres. 100,000 acres is a lot. I don't even have a way to prove that either. Um one other thing I like about the Halo, and it, none of the other collars have this, is, well, the uh, I want to say the Tractive does, and the WAGs did to a degree, but the Halo really, really been on activity tracking and uh, real-time tracking. And real-time tracking, I mean, it's, it stays right with, visibly watch it on your app. As you're moving across the yard, it's doing one second right behind you, and you just kind of see it skip right behind you as it's constantly updating it. And um, I like that, I like that quickness. Um, the activity tracking is great, uh, and Halo breaks it down great for on the app um what using color bar graphs takes into account you know their sleeping time um and it's especially useful if you want to wear them want them to wear the collar all day when they go outside and, and maybe even some at night um but it, it charts their sleeping patterns or the length of time how much time they're playing um it breaks down each and every time they approach the interior border of the fence and each time they cross and creates an alert it keeps track of all of that stuff and compiles it all into bar graphs which is a really cool feature in case you want to try to look at 
pattern, you know, over a several week period. So, because that'll help you improve your dog's behavior and interact fence and, you know, prevention feedbacks in the future and whatnot. So it's great to have that information and it's a great tool that Halo included in their app. So what are the pros and cons of the Halo collar? Well, first and foremost, I gotta say, I love the little magnetic charge. It keeps things so simple and I just come inside pop it on there and set it down on the table. It's really that easy. Um, it's uh, It charges relatively quick, um, which will be a part of the con here I discuss in a minute, but um, I just like the way it's it's easy to pop on there and pop off, and plus you don't have to worry about dirt getting all up inside a little port or anything like that. Um, the app itself is just loaded with tutorials, instructionals, guides, um, and a lot of it is video. I also like that it has universal sale coverage. Like with the spot on I mentioned earlier, you've got uh, AT&T and Verizon, and I'm not sure if they're interchangeable or not, but with the Halo, it doesn't matter. Um, and you don't you don't have to merge it with any of your cell accounts or anything. Yeah. You know, like if you have Verizon, you don't have to merge it with your Verizon plan, drive your plan costs up. It's just included with part of the package. It's universal. Wherever your dog escapes to, wherever it goes, it will connect with the shell service at that time, at that moment where your dog is at. As far as comfort and style, uh, Aries doesn't seem to have a problem with it. I like the easy fit system. Um, I think previous video I've gone over that before. Uh, what they do is they send you, when, when this comes in the box and you take it out, you also get a pair of clamps and some end caps. And these end caps, when I, when I say end cap, I'm talking about that little piece right there. So once you fit it, you're gonna have a lot of excess collar piece hanging off. You just simply cut it off, you know, pop your little new end, uh, end cap on there, Put, your, put it into your clamp, clamp it down, and you've got a brand new one. This this has been cut and replaced by me, you know, with the tools that they send you right out of the box. So I like that. Once you fit it to the dog, um, it's always gonna be fit like that. Once you cut it and you won't have all that excess collar stuff hanging around. Um, as far as cons are concerned, oh, Halo's got the subscription. You can't get out of the subscription if you wanna use the Halo. If you wanna get out of the subscription, you might as well put your Halo in a closet. Uh, they, It's mandatory, you know, if you wanna use the collar in any way, form, function, you have. Fortunately, it's $5.95 a month, and that's not too terrible. You can also pay for the yearly subscription or the every two years. And uh, those drive the price down a little bit, you know, a nine something for the one year and maybe a hundred something for the two year. I just do the month. Um, that's simplest for me and it's only, it's only $5.95. But you know, it adds to subscriptions you have with other um, services. You know, a lot of people have a lot of streaming services and different subscriptions. The covers, like I mentioned before, um, that I would talk about those, they're, to me, they're a pain. And they're really, you know, uh, people will get them because they, they come in a variety of colors. These different covers, you can get like pink, uh, yellow, orange, red, uh, something like that. It just adds a little personality to the collar. Problem is those covers are thick and they got hard Velcro in the back and they, they fit over the collar pretty solid and they'll, it, as the dog wears it, it will shift and you'll you'll go to charge it and this, this piece, the magnetic charger you need to charge is completely covered by the cover and you shift that cover back over out of the way so you can charge it without just sitting here and you know methodically trying to remove all that velcro to pull that thing off just pop it on the charger that's why i keep the covers off of it because to me it's more of a detriment it takes a little i guess the last con i'd have to say it, it takes a little bit of time to charge um the spot on i think charges in about an hour uh charges a little quicker if you've got you know a usb on both ends 20 watt charge higher the halo on the other hand is more like between one hour and three hours i've noticed it because i try to you know cover every little thing with devices before i do a review on them but that exists it's there it's one to three hours you know depending on how you use it Maybe not such a big deal, but at least you know. All right, now we're moving on to the Tractive, which uh, when you pull it out of the box, the tiny box here, you know, a neat looking device. Um, it's got some uh, rubber clamps on it and you feed your collar. Athena is not liking my video right now. You feed your uh, collar through here. And then of course, you know, it rests on your dog's neck one way or the other. Um, but it's not very heavy and it's a pretty simple looking device. Um, I've tried it out already several times now, just uh, going outside and seeing what the um, accuracy of it is. And first and foremost, it's important to understand that this is not a GPS fence in the way that spot on and the Halo are. It uses a GPS tracking feature, which is, you know, basically how you locate your dog on the app. And, uh, but it, do it doesn't work in the same way with the virtual fencing and your dog in the backyard. It doesn't use, you know, the Galileo and the uh, GNSS and the GLONASS satellites to um, help you build 
a virtual fence system in your backyard. All it really does is um, just track your dog and that's it. And I have to say, I'm not entirely impressed with it, though it does have some features that are worth looking into. Um, it does have an activity tracker, which um, is supposed to measure your dog's uh, heart rate, you know, um, how many calories they burn, how often they go to sleep, or how long they go to sleep, how long they stay in location. It breaks all this stuff down on the app. The app itself is very similar to the Halo and the Spot On, and it's got three designs that you're stuck with. You can't customize your fence at all. Um, you got a circle, um, a square, and I guess I, well, I would call it a hexagon. I think it has six sides to it, but that sort of shape. It's either hexagon or octagon. I'd have to look at it again. But those are the three shapes you're stuck with. Um, and like I said, your phone is basically the central node there and it spreads out uh, 100 some, I think it's 160 feet uh, from your phone's location. So it's pretty expansive. Um, little circle or square, but um, like I said, it's not like uh, building a permanent fence, permanent, you know, invisible fence in your backyard like you would do with a, the Halo or the Spot On app. Um, another thing that I, you know, I think is important about these things is that, you know, there's, you're supposed to have prevention feedback and the Tractive lacks prevention feedback. Now it has a sound on it. And um, obviously if the dog wanders outside of your property, you will get alerts on your on your smartphone that your pet is outside of your property. And you can act avoid evade a noise on the collar. The high pitch noise, I typically use vibration on my dog's collar for prevention feedback and the noise, the combination. This one just emits a, a high pitched noise. Uh, humans can barely hear it, but um, the dogs certainly can. It irritates them, but um, it's not immediate. Like if I press the, um, if I activate the noise on my phone, it may take 15, 20 seconds to hit on the uh, tractive device. And it may not be a, much of a deterrent. When your dog crosses the boundary, he or she can just keep on going until you go get them, you know. Uh, it's also has problems with the GPS if your dog wanders in the woods. Um, I've spoken about the tree canopy before for um you know the the halo has its own solution for it and spot on has its own solution for it with the uh, precision gps for the halo and uh, a forest mode a dedicated forest mode for the spot on tractive does not have a solution for it your dog goes into the woods your gps is going to be all messed up and it's not really going to work very well so those have been my observations with it so far um other than that you know it's a decent little setup and um i don't like the little rubber sheathing on it simply because it catches in my dog's hair but um so far i'm working with it pretty good and it's um like i said you know you could set up some pretty simplistic fences with it and as long as the dogs aren't underneath the tree canopy like they are here um it's generally pretty accurate here a few tests in my backyard have been kind of fair to meddling but uh i'll continue to work with it and see what what comes out of it and um, you know work on it with the app to make it a little bit better and this portion of the review now i don't personally have anything against the uh tractive i think it's a fairly accurate device you can see as i'm walking here the little gps uh, arrow is moving along with me um, the circle there is all you get. You don't really get to design your own virtual fencing. And another issue that you may not consider when you buy one of these is that when I'm passing outside of the circle here, there is no, I got a lot in my hand, so excuse me while I work this. There's no notification that I have left the circle at all. So it's really, just a tracking device. Um, you can put it on walk, you know, for exercise and it will do activity tracking and things of that nature. And like I said, it's accurate. You can see it moving right back into the circle as we go here or as I'm walking. So that's pretty nice. Um, from what I can gather, having used it so far for several days now, that is basically what you get. You know where your dog is at all times, as long as you're looking at your mobile device not going to alert you if uh you're not so that pretty much wraps things up you got the uh halo 3 collar you got the spot on you got the tractive now obviously you know these all provide gps fences to one degree or another and i encourage you to check these gps fences out now you know obviously tractive is done on par with spot on and halo and halo but um the spot on, spot on and Halo collars are, are, they're the top of the line. They're the bougie products. They're the ones you're gonna wanna look at the most, especially if you're worried about the safety of your dog and especially if you want to be able to track your dog's location at any given time. If you're worried about your dog getting, getting out or escaping or 
You know, even a trusted dog may bolt after, a, you know, a rabbit or a squirrel. And you're gonna wanna be able to have some sort of prevention mechanism to keep your dog safe. So I encourage you to look into these things. Um, there's a lot to love about them, you know, and it's about more than just fences too. You get a lot of peace of mind. You get, um, you know, the pros and cons that I talked about, and it's mostly pros with the halo and the spot on. And, uh, you know, like with the halo, you get halo tracking, and with the spot on, you get, you know, forest mode and uh, keep out zones and things that you can, you know, really focus on keeping your dog out of so that your dog, you know, remains healthy and safe. I was also originally supposed to cover the WAGs. Unfortunately, the WAGs company for financial reasons or whatnot went under. So I was never able to get my hands on that product. I mean, it is what it is. It was uh, something I was looking forward to, but couldn't get my hands on it. They've completely gone under. So if you happen to see one on Facebook Marketplace or eBay, you can no longer use any of those features. So don't go ahead and buy one. You know, you're not gonna find them on the, you know, places like Amazon anymore but there might still be some wags floating around out there on you know, your secondary websites like, um, or marketplaces like Facebook and, and eBay and things of that nature. Don't buy one because it's not gonna work for you. Last but not least, you know, in closing, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We always got more information coming in, got more uh, things we wanna test out and uh, that I wanna show you and review and look over or ask any questions. I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate you sticking with it. Some of these videos are a little long, I get it, but um, I really appreciate it, especially those likes and subscriptions. That's gonna help us out a lot.